This is crazy, Saiken. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan here, back again with an Arrow Shadowverse video. It is that time of the year where a new expansion is about to come out. We have the pre release for uh, Storm over Rivale. In, which is coming out tomorrow. So just like what I did from the last expansion, I wanted to do a tier making video on basically, it's kind of like an overview review of all the cards that is coming out in the upcoming expansion. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing the review of cards is basically going through each class and then I'm going to rank the classes against each other. So just for clarification, this is a tier making video on the cards in a vacuum. Um, coming out in the upcoming expansion, I'm going to be talking about each class's um, a little bit about what cards they're losing from rotation, but also what c kind of archetypes these cards are going to be supporting, or are they going to make a new archetype, and just overall the good the quality of the cards that are coming out for each class. I'm not doing a meta prediction video just yet. I'm going to be doing that um, in the near future. So if you guys are interested in a meta prediction make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you guys know what's up um, and just because these videos do get a little bit lengthy and especially this one since i'm going to be going over um, like many different cards that are coming out in the expansion um, i'm going to be doing this video into two parts so tonight is going to be half of the classes there's like nine um, including neutral so we're going to do uh, five today and then four tomorrow so if you guys are watching this on the day of the upload, uh, make sure you guys, again, are subscribed to the channel with notifications on uh, so that you guys know when my part two is coming out, which is coming out the next day. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, the way I'm also rating these cards is I'm also considering which cards are being um, rotated out. So like how good are the new cards replacing what we lost? So for Bloodcraft, we are losing um, Azazel, which I think is the only significant card that the class is losing. Yeah. So yeah, let's start talking about the cards that Blood is getting for this expansion. Um, so they're getting a Highlander card. First of all, I don't think this card is very good. I'm not going to read through all the effects, by the way. It's going to get too long. Uh, I don't think... Like, this card has a very strong effect, but... Of course, it's going to have to have a strong effect. If you have the fanfare, you can't have duplicate cards in your deck. Um, pretty much like, just like the one, which is a pretty old Highlander card now, it really didn't work out very well in the meta. And like, like this card is good because you get two followers out, but and they get the buff from the Arcane Personnel Carrier. But um, yeah, I don't think it's worth running a Highlander deck just to be playing this effect. And I don't think there's enough good cards in Bloodcraft to be running like 36 other one of cards. So yeah, um, this is a better legendary that Blood is getting, um, Unblemished Wings. Basically, I think this card supports really well with the aggro burn blood uh, deck because just because it's a three cost, so it, does, it is fusible into your ball. Um, it also, if you at least draw on 15 cards, it's going to evolve and gain Storm. So that's just extra burn damage. And you're going to, you always, like if you're playing a ball deck, you're very often drawing 15 cards because ball is just drawing a, you know, a lot of cards and deck has a lot of draw. So yeah, I think this card is pretty decent in the ball support. Um, with that as well, we have the Showdown Demon, which is also support for ball. Um, because you're going to be able to draw two extra cards, you get two extra pings off of your corrosion, uh, off of your corruption, and yeah, it supports your Voila as well. Voila is not like a huge effect; it's just a three play point three damage storm, uh, but it's just nice, and I think these just work really well into the the ball support. Um, Blood also got some Wrath support cards like Demon Blade Knight. Uh, this is again like Wrath gets good, good cards. The thing with Wrath is just that it's pretty slow to get into your Wrath, and it makes sense because honestly, if you could get Wrath any faster than like turn seven, um, I think that the the deck would be kind of broken. 
Um, so yeah, what's keeping Wrath balanced or underpowered is just how slow it is to get all your cards online, in my opinion. Uh, but this is a very solid card for Wrath, and I think eventually Wrath is going to get to the point where you could get Wrath active by like turn 5, turn 6, and it's just going to get a lot better. Uh, this is this is a pretty decent um, like control card, Control Blood, but Control Blood's kind of fallen off. Um, so it's not that good. So, like, the the cards that were, are not good, I'm just going to be skipping over, basically. Uh, Bloodfall, Bloodfall, I think, is an insane spell. It's also really good for, I guess, um, Control Blood, or if you're playing, like, a Wrath Control Blood, it also works for that as well. Just one play point, destroy a three play point or less faller, like, that's really good tempo. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a card, this card's, like, probably, it's probably the best card in Blood, honestly from this set. Uh, and they're a solid Wrath card. Um, it, it, it's either going to be pinging you to get towards your Wrath more consistently, um, and it's also going to be a Storm later on, 3-3 three, three Storm. There's a lot of cards. This whole expansion is all about summoning, no, summoning those amulets, so um, having that is not that big of a deal. Blood also has ways of having amulets on the board through other cards from previous expansions, so yeah, I think this is actually a solid card. Um, Cards meh. Cards meh as well. It's too expensive. And yeah, that's, so that's Bloodcraft. In general, Bloodcraft got some decent Wrath support, but I don't think it's pushing Wrath enough to be in the meta yet. Um, I could be wrong, but that's just my prediction. And it's got some decent battle support. So to put Blood into the tier, I would be putting blood into B because I think it's got okay cards, but it's not there's nothing like broken that is gained in this expansion. Um so there's nothing broken, it's just okay stuff. It's decent support from what Bloodcraft already has, and blood's not really losing that much, so I think it's going to be static. Uh so next up we're talking about Rune. Uh Rune is losing Witch's Cauldron, which Mysterium Projects also something, but not that big of a deal. In general, which uh, RuneCraft isn't losing too much. So, okay, so... Like, RuneCraft actually is gaining some really crazy stuff this expansion. First of all, they're gaining this legendary Miser Neighborhood Hero, 1.12. And, like, um, he works really well with either Dirt or Natura Rune, because both Dirt and Natura Rune, you're going to be able to play cheap amulets, and you have cheap ways of removing them from play. Uh, so... You're going to be able to get multiple rapid fires into your hand if you evolve him. He reduces your rapid fires to down to one cost. Um, and yeah, rapid fire is just like a really good spell. Like, it's a cheap spell, especially if it's only costing one to do three damage to a follower. And if you play three, which I think is pretty easy to get three, then you get to do two damage to the enemy leader, so you get some burn damage with this. So the rapid fires are really good, of course, with spell boost rune, because if you could get them down to one, they're going- or even just at two, if you have more than two spell boost cards in your hand, you're buffing- you're, you're netting play points, essentially. Um, and so I'm not sure if this card is actually going to be, be played in like a spell boost rune deck, where you could be playing, um, like all the motorbikes and carriers and stuff to get the amulets in play to get rapid fires or if you're going to be playing this into your dirt or natura rune i think it could fit into all three archetypes for rune honestly um next off they have vincent the peacekeeper and this card is also a very strong legendary card in general um if it's attacks defense changes he gets to evolve for free um, which is very easy because all your um, amulets, like the motorcycle, the carrier, etc., uh, the Pegasus steed, they're going to buff him up. He's go so he gets to evolve, and or you could just use your own Evo point if you really have to. Because gain you get the leader effect where you get words of judgments into your hand, and words of judgments are such a strong card. Like it's a one play point spell. First of all, just being a one play point spell is just really good again for spell boost rune, which is already a really good deck in the middle. Um, and also, like, it's a one man spell that essentially sil it silences your opponent's followers. Um, so, like, decks that- so, like, followers that just have, like, ear wards, or they have some kind of, like, uh, persistent effect, or they have, like, a la uh, last words effect, all of that gets removed for one play point, or possibly zero, because if you have an amulet on the board, again, natural dirt, or even just, like, those motorcycle stuff, 
it's a zero cost spell. Zero cost spell for rune, like, like, this is crazy. Psychons, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if this card's actually as broken as it looks, but it, like, you could, it, it's just broken because even if you're like playing against a deck that they don't have followers where the silence really matters to them, it's a zero cost spell for rune. So like, you mix in if you build like some kind of spell boost rune that could have some amulets, or you don't even have to play the amulets. Just having the one cost spell is just so good. Like, yeah. So this card, I think, is really powerful, and it gets even better because they have magical gunslinger. Um. It puts a follower without fanfare from your deck into your hand, and it also puts the amulet into your hand. So this automatically sets up your Vincent the Peacekeeper because Pin Vincent does not have a fanfare effect. So every most followers actually have fanfare effects, so it's going to be very easy to build a deck with Magical Gunslinger, and she's always going to draw your Vincent. So that's it just draws your Vincent on curve for you, and yeah, I think this is broken. Like, this is actually nuts. Like, these three cards are... Well, I guess the two legendaries, and this is just a really good support. But it's so good. So good, guys. Kind of a kind of went on to a ramp there. But um, moving on to that, like, they have some... This card's, like, decent for dirt. I don't know how what good dirt's going to be because spell boost rune just looks pretty nutty. But again, I think all ar the archetypes are kind of good. Like, the only archetype that's not directly supported, I guess, is Natura. Um... This card is an air amulet. Um, this card is like decent as well. Accelerate one. It's like an accelerate one, so it's a one cut spell again for spell boost rune. And yeah, like it sets up an amulet for you, so you're going to be able to set up for like. It sets up for Vincent basically. So this card is actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of funny too. A golem on a carrier. Um, Scorching Blast. An air powerful card because uh, spell boost rune or dirt rune. All the runes actually they just draw a lot of cards, so getting onto 20 or less in your deck is pretty easy. And once it happens, it's a 1 play point 5 damage uh, removal spell, so it's pretty good. Um, this card. This card's alright, it's like meh. It's like decent, it's fine. Um, this card's interesting to me. Uh, I don't think it'll be that played though. Giving your opponent a 3 7, it's kind of annoying. I mean, I guess if you just fire embrace the target after it's fine but um yeah not really uh crystal fencer this card is also interesting like of course it uh, supports spell boost obviously and 20 cards or less in your deck very like i said very easy to hit so i i'm not sure if this card is going to be good because early into the game when you have more than 20 cards in your deck it's just all right it's like decent it's a 3.33 anyways uh but when you have and then later into the game, it's going to be able to... I guess it makes your bricky hands in the mid-late games better. So it's like pretty good. Uh, Terra Nova, not really a good card. Um, and yeah, that's it for Rune. So it's probably obvious for you guys where I'm going to be putting Rune. Um, I think Rune is absolutely getting busted cards this expansion. So S tier. Easiest S tier of choice of my life. Like I just looked at the first two cards... It, that rune was gained, and I, I already knew it, I was going to be putting it in S tier. Alright, so next off, we're going to be talking about Dragon. Uh, in terms of Dragon, they're only really, like, they're losing Wise Dragon New Scholar, it's not big of a deal. And they're losing Chances Dragon, so not really losing that much. Uh, so Dragon gets this new Fusion card. I think this card, this card is obviously very strong. Um, you're going to know why he gets even better. But his fusion ability is very strong because he's going to be able to ramp you and then he also dr draws you two cards. So you're only really minusing one by fusing three cards because you get to draw two. So very solid um, card. It's a, it's a 10 play point cost but again, um, you're going to see that this card actually gets better even though it's 10 cost. Um, after that, they get another ramping card uh, with this new legendary. Um, she gets a bonus effect when you're in overflow you get storm too which is nice because you're going to be able to ramp up like this card this card ramps you um this card will also ramp you if uh if it increases the attack or defense again that's very easy with all the neutral amulets in the game with this expansion um after that this card is also very interesting uh, 
Evolve effect, summon a Phoenix Ruth. This Phoenix Ruth is going to make, like, this card a 5 cost. And, like, Dragon already has some big followers. Like, we know Dragon was playing, trying to play, like, some kind of showdown Dragon where they're just playing all these big followers with those, um, with their, their count Dragon. I don't know what the number was. But they have a lot of big cards, so Ramp Dragon seems like a deck possibly with the Phoenix Roost. Obviously, Phoenix Roost does help your opponent out as well. Um, so it's kind of a gamble. I'm not too sure how good this card will be in the actual meta. Card pretty solid when you're in overflow, you get a free um, like out the steed, the carrier, and the bike. You know, you could cost make it cost zero um, when you're in overflow. Obviously, out of the three, I forgot. I need to mention this quickly. Out of the three, obviously the personnel carrier is the strongest. It's the most expensive one, but you get the most stats and it's awards. So you get a beefy faller onto your. You get a faller to be really beefy, and it's just going to help you with board tempo generally. Bullet bike is also pretty decent, and then of course this is just meh, but it comes out out of meh cards. This card doesn't seem that good, um, but one thing to keep in mind is like the. The big expensive cards that are just meh effects. Um, if you're playing a Phoenix Roots deck, they actually become decent. But of course, like if you run the risk of running bad or worse cards, um, and hopes of drawing Phoenix Roots. This card is like solid. I'm not sure if it's worth running in your deck, but it's like it could just be a two drop two two. You could get Hellflame Dragons later. Um, this card is a like, pretty decent. This card is actually a really good card, I think, for discard dragon. Um, which I think is the only discard support that it's gained. Oh, it's also gained, um, oops. It's also gained a mermaid, which is kind of support for discard, but I don't know if it's actually good. It's pretty meh. 3 play point three three storm if you discarded. Um, nothing special there. Pumpkin Dragon. I really like the art on this. It's a really cute card. And it's actually a pretty decent card. Like, I think you would run this in a Phoenix Roost deck because it was... If when you when you reduce it with Phoenix Roots, it becomes a four play point five five, and you're going to be able to draw three cards out of it, and those three cards get reduced with Phoenix Roots. So I think yeah, this card you probably run it in your Phoenix Roots deck. Um, this card's not that good in my opinion. And yeah, that's just Dragon. So yeah, Dragon. Um, they got solid legendaries. Phoenix Roots looks very interesting as well. Um, I think Dragon got really strong cards, so it just deserves to be a solid A tier um, in this video. So next off, we're talking about Forest. Forest, I think, actually took the biggest hit out of the rotation because we're losing uh, Rhinoceros, and we're also losing May. May is just solid in a lot of Forest decks because a lot of Forest decks play cheap cards. You can often get four more cards played, um, but obviously, like losing Roach is a big feels bad, man, and. Yeah, there goes my identity in Shadowverse. So this expansion didn't reprint a roach, unfortunately. So yeah, we're sad about that. So Force is gained this new follower. I think this card is pretty decent in if you're going to be playing like an Amataz a Forest deck. I don't really see it being useful in like Accelerate much. Um, so it's generally an aggressive card anyway. So it's like an aggressive, it fits well into Amataz. And there is some fairy support coming out from this expansion. Uh, this force mainly though kind of got support for um, amulets accelerate so the amulets are just like the carrier's speed bike uh, but also there's also a lot of accelerate cards which we'll see in a second this card this card kind of supports it in with everything um, you can get multiple carriers and bikes out this card in a nutshell is just another one cost accelerate just to activate accelerate combos another aggressive card i think i feel like force is kind of just going with a tempo mid-rangey deck that just pushes a little bit of damage at a time with accelerates and getting the amulets up so that you can get cards like this enhance um enhance four to evolve it and if you had played all three of those different amulets, it would go up to like 5 attack. So, which is pretty good for 4, four play points. This is a solid Accelerate 1. Accelerate 1 deals 3 damage to Random Faller. Strictly better card than the neutral Accelerate 2 deals 3 damage to Random Faller. Um, so, some power creep there. But, um, the Accelerate, the actual uh, card itself... When you play it on the board, 5 play point 5 5, but accelerate effect destroy and random follower is also really strong. So 
yeah, Tartan goes with the accelerate stuff, it's like, okay. Um, so going into some of the fairy stuff, we get uh, Corrosive Thorns. The second effect of Corrosive Thorns is actually really interesting. It's, of course, Brambles, but on a spell. And yeah, this kind of supports with Amatize. It doesn't put the fairies in your hand, though, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, if you're just playing kind of like a rally aggressive um, fairy deck, it could be pretty good. This card gives you a fairy, but it's three play points to add one fairy in your hand. It's just kind of meh, honestly. Solid two drop, in my opinion, for um, amulets and accelerate. Now, a card for the amulet accelerate kind of deck. I think amulets and accelerates is just going to become a deck just because we're losing Roach, which was the main condition for a lot of forest decks. So, so yeah, like if I have to rate what Forest is getting, it's very kind of underpowered cards, I think, and it's just kind of supporting like a mid rangey style uh, deck where you're just trying to somehow get an advantage on the board and you just push damage a little bit at a time. You don't have like a huge burst damage, um, no crazy combos that comes into my mind. Um, so, like, overall, I, I, I would have to put Forest into C. Like, I don't think com when I looked at all the other cards. Like, from what Dragon was getting, or what Rune was getting, um, Forest just was kind of underwhelming to me. So, I ha I moved it down to C tier. It was originally like a B tier, but it got deranked. Um, so we're moving on to Haven now. Haven is similar to Forest. They're losing, actually, really significant cards. They're losing Elanas, which of course was a deck in itself, and they're losing Kel, which was a very solid um, card in a lot of Haven decks, or almost every Haven deck. And they're also losing Golden Bell, which is a really good um, amulet for them. What is Haven game? Where they're getting this new legendary. This um, Selena is actually a very strong card. Um, going with like kind of an amulet. First of all. The expansion is giving us generic amulet cards, which just works really well with Haven because they have a lot of um, amulet synergies anyways. So like, if you get like all those neutral amulets plus your own Haven amulets plus the crystallized amulets that you're getting that Haven has, um, like her fanfare effect is really hit to easy to hit these conditions. Like to get four down, or I would say you're always probably going to get at least two, um, sometimes three, and then. If you go ham, maybe if you commit to four, maybe you can go to four. But the Haven Fire is a very strong card. Two play point spell, deal four damage to a random enemy faller, and then just one ping damage to your and and you're going to basically just get to keep cycling this because if you have an amulet on your board, which most of the time I think you would be able to do, um, you get another Haven Fire into your hand. So very solid legendary for Haven. Um, this is also a pretty interesting Haven card as well. Um, first of all, it's a crystallized one for countdown ten amulet, so it's going to be able to um, get your amulet conditions off quite e more easily, like the Selena. It lowers down quicker if you have wards, and we know Haven has quite a bit of ward fallers. They supported this archetype before, and it summons itself. It's just a strong card, strong card, especially when it comes out because you get to eight, you do four damage to all enemy fallers and some ping damage too. So you, you get a little bit of burn damage and you get a good AOE. The countdown, I think. The count at 10 is going to reduce maybe in 3 or 4 turns, you could probably get him out. Which I think is very quick honestly, or very just fair. Vengeful Sniper is also a very strong card in my opinion. Um, because it deals it deals damage to the enemy leader. Like 2 play points, you get to burn your your opponent. Um, it's half the number of amulets destroyed this match. All of the neutral, like the motorbikes and stuff, the carriers, they get banished so they won't count. But like all your um, crystallized cards, Haven amulets, is going to count. So you're going to be able to get like probably decent damage, maybe two or three damage on average, um, to a faller and your opponent leader for two play points. Also, the evolve effect on this is also just really good as well in general. Holy Sanctuary, I don't like this card too much because it stays on your board even after you use up all your effects. So it's kind of just taking board space which I don't really like in amulet decks. This card very solid as well. Again a crystallized one. Crystallized ones they kind of power creep crystallized. I think most of them before were costing at least two. So lowering the crystallized down to one and then the countdown being only two for this effect is just really strong. Um, even if you're paying five to play him he's, his onboard effect is strong as well. His evolve is also good. This is just kind of a solid silver card. 
Um, this card, I don't really see any too much play because you don't care too much about the health since we lost Alana's um, Pure Metamorphosis. I think this card could be a decent tech card. Um, you could play it with your Sanctuary, so you could make your Sanctuary not a brick on your board later, but um, I don't know. This card's like, yeah, you might play it as a tech, but we've seen similar transform cards that look really good, but th people don't play them for some reason. This one's a uh, 1 play point two two essentially, I would say. And yeah, summon a Barong, so you get more wards actually. I mean, actually when you think about it, this card is actually pretty strong. If I play Enhance 5, you get a 2-2 ward, and you get a Barong, which is a 5-4 ward, and it can't be targeted by enemy effects. And having 2 ward followers also is going to make your Anvit reduce quicker. So that's actually a pretty solid card. Um, and it also supports your other ward cards like this card. Draw draw cards based on how many wards you have in play so you could draw quite a bit S something Haven was ra lacking because especially because they're losing Golden Bell with some extra card draw so Enchanted Knight fixes that void I so I don't know Haven I think Garuda is finally going to be good um, I don't know how Haven going to be built because they have like wards into they have ward supports which help out with amulets and you could just kind of go maybe full amulets as well. I think the control haven could still be viable because they got some decent control cards. Like this card you could put into your control deck. This card could go into your control deck as well. It's like, yeah, like haven is, I think they got some really good cards. I'm not like, I don't know how the build is going to look, but the cards look amazing in my opinion. I think haven is going to be in a good spot. So I'm putting haven in S tier behind rune. Um, rune's still better. Um, so yeah, these were five classes, so we're in the halfway point of the video. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Shadowverse content. Um, also, like I said, I'm going to have part two of this coming out tomorrow. So, and yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And comment down below what you think about the tiers so far. Do you disagree, disagree, or if there's anything I missed out, um, please let me know in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.